As usual, the one man singing. Hello and a very warm welcome to this week's Scene on 7. My name is Steve Brennan. Now then, if you're having the week off as part of the Easter holidays, then I hope you're having a wonderful time. One way of ensuring that, of course, is to watch this week's programme. Now, there's loads to get through, so without any further delay, here's a quick look at some of the items coming up this week. Enjoy. Simon and Mandana are back with a special Easter edition of Grapevine. The Welsh are in Windsor enjoying Easter. We talk to them and the residents of Windsor. A look at the crime scene with Bob Owen and Nick Wood from Ashford Police Station. And we unveil the latest deterrent against speeding on the region's roads. We also have the brand new video, Heaven in My Hands, from Hope. My guests this week are David Hood from William Hill. We'll be talking about betting and the Grand National, and Maria Davis from the Cable Corporation. No sport this week, however. Andre is probably in hiding, as his forecast of a Manchester United treble has fallen at the first hurdle. Oh dear, what a shame. Never mind, I don't think. Now then, a special edition for Easter of Grapevine. Here's Mandana and Simon Brandt. Hello and welcome to a very special Easter edition of On the Grapevine. Yes, uh, WMTV has blown the budget and um, we've still got to put up with the trees in the background of Scene on 7. Mandana's with us. Welcome back. Thank you. What have you been up to? Uh, quite a bit. <laughs> quite a bit. Yes, your normal <laughs> vagarism. I'm not going to tell you right now. Well, I like as long to as you were clothed. Bit... Well, as long as you were clothed, well, I that's was, the main I like thing. to remain a bit mysterious, you know how it is. Mm. If you fancy visiting Thorpe Park this Easter, then there's a new ride you can try out. It's the Chief Ranger's Carousel, and it's all part of the new attraction there called Ranger County. If you're taking the family, then you can buy the family super save ticket, which will cost you just £32 for four people. If you want more information, then you can phone Thorpe Park on 0932 569 393. Tom, sounds like a good day out, and let's hope the weather's good for you. Hear the real message of Easter at King's <coughs> Church on Sunday the 3rd of April at 10.30am. That's at the King's Centre, 673 Galvin Road in Slough. And you can give them a call on 0753 539 554 to find out some more information on that service. Check local press for other details of services in your area. And um, you can also tune into the movie magazine. And the telephone numbers will be on there for the events that we've covered. Right, well, Fun and Frolics is the name of the game mm. at Sounds Bracknell Ice Rink over the Easter holidays. From now until the 11th of April, there's discos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. There's the obligatory bouncy castle, as well as loads of competitions and prizes. The fun takes place between 11 and 4 p.m. every day midweek. And if you want to pay a visit, you can find the ice rink at the John Nike Leisure Sport Complex. That's John Nike Way in Bracknell. So, come on, when was the last time you were on a bouncy castle? Oh, <laughs> going back a few years. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Why not visit Sunbury's <laughs> Walled Garden this spring? That's at Sunbury Park, Thames Street. It's a delightful walled garden displaying numerous styles and plant collections and is open daily from dawn till dusk. And Granny Brant's paid a visit to there. And, um, she can recommend it. And um, How is your Granny? She's very well, actually. Oh, good. She's um, st still, still in the land while. of the living. We haven't um, quite got rid of her yet, and the plants haven't It's a nice way of putting it. But uh, she shall be back on your screens at some point this oh, summer. Oh, good. Right. Now, if you're uh, paying a visit to King Edward Court in Windsor to do a bit of sh Easter shopping, then there's entertainment laid on specially for the younger shoppers. On Saturday, the 2nd of April, there's Crump the Clown, mm. while on the 5th of April, there's a visit by Happy the Clown. And the performances take place in King Edward Court at 11.30, 12.30, 2 and 3 p.m. However, if you're shopping in Slough, then you can meet Busy Bee, no less, at the observatory on Saturday between 11.30 and 3.30. And while you're there, Star FM are collecting Easter eggs for charity, so you can take them along to the Star FM reception on the upper floor of the observatory. So if I took an egg, I'd probably eat them before they got there. Anyway, that yes. sounds me out there, doesn't it? That's something else. <laughs> anyway, that. something that um, is close to my heart. The Feathers in Laylam are holding the Southern Counties Regional Ale Festival. That's from now until April the 7th. There's great food and beer with no less than 17 real ales. For more information, dial 0784 4 Five three five six one. That's if you're sober enough to dial the number. <laughs> you 
Consumer, the okay. recently opened art centre in Staines at the Old Town Hall is holding an event called Jazz Underground. The box office number is 0784 461 617 and some of the events to look out for include Annie Whitehead's Rude as on Sunday the 10th of April the Byron Wallen <coughs> Quartet, excuse me, an acoustic group continuing the trumpet legacy of Dizzy Gillespie, Woody Shaw, Clifford Brown and Lee Morgan. Tickets are £4.50 or just £4 if you're a member. Doors open at 7.30pm and it all takes place in the cellar bar. Mm, it's really good atmosphere down there actually. Nice. They're actually, they're going to have um, courses as well. You can go along and have a few lessons beforehand for a small fee and then you have a jamming session afterwards. Oh, right. That sounds, sounds good. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. If you're off to London over Easter, why not visit the International Spring Garden Fair at Olympia, which is taking place until Monday the 4th of April. Tickets are £9 and you'll find everything you've ever dreamed of for your garden, apparently. The event takes place between 9.30am and 6.30pm every day. I think it's till 530 on the Monday and you can um, buy all the plants on the Monday. So if you're tuning in and you're watching this on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, my apologies. You've missed out. You should send Granny over. We She'd should love it. She'd have a yeah, she'd spend loads of money, she? though. <laughs> right. Well, here's another Easter idea. Why not join in the Easter activities at Hampton Court? There are guided tours of the gardens, and on Bank Holiday Monday, you can see inside the Palace Glasshouses. There are also several costumed events. Phone 081 781 9500 for more information. That what? lot out there are getting I a bit know, devious, they're, aren't they're, they? Um, they're suffering from insanity. I know. Them. Never mind. Shame it was not amnesia. Anyway, <laughs> I shouldn't mock the afflicted. Um, let's just say very quickly that it's very worth going to Hampton Court because oh, um, if you want a good day out and you want some fresh air and you've just stuffed a massive Sunday lunch, you can put it around the gardens and um, it doesn't cost you a penny. Anyway, great to have you. Thank, oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Not literally, I hasten to add. But um, let's say goodbye <laughs> on that happy note. Well, it's been nice And uh, one back. day we may get to be work together. Goodbye. WMTV. And it's that camera. Wrong it's that camera. camera. <laughs> no, never mind. You can forget <laughs> us for that. We've got again. the right camera. Bye bye, and now back to a professional. I'll get him one of these days. Thank you, team. A professional indeed. So now <laughs> you have a whole lot of things to choose from this Easter. Thank you, Mandon and Simon. And if you're taking a trip to the betting shop, you may want to pay special attention to what my first guest has to say. He is David Hood, and he's the Public Relations Manager for William Hill. David, welcome to WMTV. How are you, Steve? I'm great. Terrific. Now then, we've got a, a fabulous game to give away. Uh, we'll, more about that a little later. The traditional image of bookmakers, um, I think it's fair to say, um, sort of over a period of years, has been one of smoky rooms, paper-strewn floors, uh, beer bellies, that sort of thing. Now, William Hill is at the forefront of changing all of those uh, things. Now, how have you gone about it, basically? Certainly one or two ladies visiting the shop now that uh, wouldn't want to have beer bellies, I don't think. <laughs> no, we're, or we're, builder's bum. Or builder's bum, whatever. Right. We're, we're, we're spending a lot of money updating our, our premises. Basically, we have to compete in a leisure market now. We spend, on average, 8 or 10 million a year um, refurnishing our Just shops. Just on the premises? Just on refurnishing the shops. Um, we have a lot of no, non-smoking shops now. We have a lot more seating available. Um, the actual information and, and the visual aids for the punter are much better with the screens and, and obviously uh, in the last decade with the advent of SIS they can get the, the pictures straight from the race course um, as opposed to just audio which they had That's to put satellite in the information course. systems. That's right. Yeah. Um, and of course we get racing now from all over the world not just the UK but France, America, South Africa so I mean it really is a truly international sport. Now the, the, betting, the law has slightly changed about the betting shops are open till 10 o'clock at night is that? That's right, deregulisation is, is creeping in bit by bit uh, and during the summer months we have evening opening now which allows people uh, a different clientele almost because the man in the street that, that is normally at work during the afternoon yeah. he can come in and watch the evening racing. And now the evening racing you've got now at Wolverhampton on the, is it the all weather track? That's right. Um, so that, they can also bet on that live in the evening as well? Not at the moment. Um, the legislation only a allows for opening between, I think it is the 1st of April to, through to the end of the evening opening season. That doesn't coincide with Wolverhampton. At being the moment. Oh, well, at never the mind. Moment. Perhaps it'll happen one day. What about Sunday racing? How, how is that uh, coming along? Because there's a big thing going on with the church, etc., about uh, Sunday racing and betting on the track and should the betting shops be allowed to mm -hmm. open, etc. How's that going to affect you? I don't think you can have one without the other sure. because uh, without a shadow of doubt, 
what betting shops does is bring the product to the people and what racing is failing to do at the moment to, to a great degree is bring the people to the product. Um, now Sunday racing will go some way to, to helping that because uh, it means that families and more people will be able to go and enjoy the, the sport and it is a spectator sport. We're competing with football, with up and coming sports like basketball and ice hockey. Mm. Um, and, but unless you have betting shops open on a Sunday, the majority of people still won't take an interest. It's got to come for the good of the industry uh, in order to survive over here. We have it in France, we have it in Ireland, we got have it in, in the Hong States, Kong. got it in Hong Kong. Mm. Um, so it's got to come, um, and the sooner the better. It meets the customer's requirements. Now at the moment there's a lot of uh, speculation, for example, very, very current speculation on, mm. for example, John Major's future. Um, there must be betting, there must be odds set on that. What's the latest play, uh, state of play on that? I don't think John Major would be very happy to be watching this, but he is odds on, 8 to 11 to be out of office by the next general election. Um, he's not a very popular guy at the moment. I think within his own cabinet, indeed, uh, the gentleman that's, that's um, the renegade that's caused all the problems this week, uh, Tony Marlowe, he's a hundred to one chance at the moment. And who's uh, tipped uh, to replace him? Kenneth Clark is, is pretty much touted around as being our next leader, I think, of, of the Tory party. He's an odd shot, he, he was an odd shot, shot at four to six. He's actually just uh, easing to even money. But um, he's most people's idea of the next toilet. I'll take him to an image consultant before he becomes prime minister. Um, people bet on just about anything, the weird and the wonderful. Um, they've done it for years. For example, um, aliens landing on Earth, Elvis being a traffic warden in Wigan, alive and well, um, the Loch Ness Monster, umpteen things. What are the most bizarre things that people will bet on? They'll come into your shop. You've got no odds on the board for this particular subject. Tell me some of the more bizarre aspects of betting. Obviously that type of thing is a very specialist angle. Um, we wouldn't generally quote it within the shops. What we would do is, is ask people to write in to the press office where either Graham Sharp or myself at Hills uh, will sit down and try and find a price. Now uh, intelligent extraterrestrial life and we stress intelligent <laughs> rather than just finding a piece of rock from some meteor yep. and somebody said ah there is ET. But intelligent extraterrestrial life is so popular uh, when we first quoted years ago, we were in some of the realms of a thousand or more than that to one. We're now down as low as a hundred to one, simply because of the weight of cash uh, and the the advances that science makes. I mean, NASA have several programs looking for intelligent life, extraterrestrial life, um, and some people think it's just a matter of time. The emphasis used to be based solely on, for example, greyhounds uh, and racehorses, but people are betting on all sorts of other sport now. Mm. Um, tell me about the most popular of those. By far and away the most popular is still football. Yeah. Um, I mean, we offer a range of bets on, on soccer that they, they can't get with the, the general pools companies, particularly on individual matches. If there's a live televised match, then we, we, we'll, we'll offer a range for the first goal scorer, obviously for the winning team, for the correct score. Time of the goal. Not so much the time of the goal, but for, for the actual who scores it and, you know. Right. Um, there are a range of bets there and they can have individuals and then of course there, there's different sections lists on our own coupons throughout the shops where people can have doubles and trebles for their homes and or away wins um, and that is very very popular as all sports are I mean at Hills we have the um, we're the authorized bookmakers for uh, the WPBSA so we're, we're at all the snooker tournaments again for the PGA we're at all the, the Volvo golf tournaments and in fact we broke history this year in 93 we were the first people ever to be allowed to make a book at the Ryder Cup. Right. Um, and there was phenomenal interest because we had a, a huge betting marquee there. And the Americans don't have this type of activity, of course. And we were inundated. They were coming in with the camcorders and the cines. Uh, and they couldn't believe that they could walk in, one, have a bet on the tournament, and two, not only that, but stand there and watch the racing as well. So you took some dollars, huh? We actually paid a few, uh, a few pounds out because I think, if you remember, the result went the wrong way for us. It certainly did. Yeah, I I'm, I'm not, not, don't want to talk about it. Very upsetting, <laughs> very upsetting. Um, so your biggest day of the year is coming up soon, the Grand National probably, where people who wouldn't, let's say, normally bet, the housewives, the, the average man in the street, who doesn't bet all year round, there are some serious punters in the nation, um, come in and, and lay a few quid on Leicester or whoever their favourite is at the moment. Is Leicester still their most popular bet? Not for the National, but he probably would be for a derby. Because right. um, he's not riding in the National. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. I, I think in actual fact, not a lot of people know, but Leicester, Leicester did ride winners over hurdles, mm. over jumps. He yeah, actually he won a triumph hurdle. Um, he's a granddad just recently, or he's a father again, I should say, just recently. <laughs> so uh, there's plenty of life in him still, but I don't know whether the National fences would phase him. 
It is by far and away our biggest day of the year. I mean, it, 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 we turn over on the National Day double, for instance, what we would turn over on Derby Day. Right. Um, what it, sort of money is bet on the National on, on National Day? What sort of money would William Hill take en masse over the counter? Well, we would expect this year, hopefully, to break all records with, with the fact that the extra interest there will be in the race. We'd look to ex it, to take in excess of 15 million this year on on National Day, um, which is a phenomenal figure. Now we've got a, you've offered us a very very nice prize, a very special prize. Um, it's actually it's a 25 pound bet on charity, uh, for the charity of, of the viewer's choice. Uh, we've got a very simple question, uh, which we actually set last week, but just to re-emphasise it, what's the question? Well, as most people would know, Aintree is uh, the home of the Grand National. Um, what we'd like to know is in which city is Aintree. In which city is Aintree? Right, really really good one. But we also have a very, very special prize for you, and I'll come to the question for this prize in a moment. As well as winning the £25 to bet on charity, you must have played this game. I've had a look at it. This is a wonderful, wonderful game. Um, this is called the really nasty horse racing game. Now, I'll give you a brief guide to it. You've obviously seen it before. Generous George is the betting, uh, is the, uh, the, the bookmaker. The bookie. Uh, he used to work for William Hills, but he was fired because he was, he was bent. But what we're going to do, sorry, what we're going to do is... You roll these dice, basically like so. Um, obviously, each player gets only two. Uh, and you move around the course, um, early pace, uh, and then finishing well, and up. obviously, they come around that way, quick and what, fast and, what did I say? Finish well, and then there's the finish. There's fences, and all these cards have got little trip-ups and bonuses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, every player starts with 20,000 pounds. I think it's a great game. It looks like an intriguing way to lose your shirt, doesn't it? it? Well, yeah. you don't lose your shirt, but apparently, I have it on very good authority from, um, from Tony, who, uh, uh, from, from Tom, sorry, Tom White, who uh, invented this game. Uh, the company's called Upstart, and what they did, they get feedback from people saying that, you know, men have had to sleep on the couch because of the rows that ensue. People take these sort of games very, very seriously. Uh, so what we're going to do is we have uh, three of these to give away. One is going to be combined with... Um, the prize that you're offering, £25 bet on the Grand National. It is a fantastic game, and it'll keep you amused for hours, especially in the winter when racing's cancelled so often with frozen, frozen ground, etc. Water cetera, cetera, and whatever exactly. else. Can you bet on that, by the way? On racing being abandoned? Yeah. No, because what we tend to do, obviously, is all weather courses now, uh, and also we draft in the racing from South Africa, so uh, there's always plenty of activity to keep the punters happy. Right. Well, to win uh, this prize, in addition to um, the one that... Um, William Hill are very kindly, as you heard David mention. Uh, I would like you to tell me uh, exactly who won the Grand National in 1993. Who won the Grand National in 1993? There it is, right underneath me. Boom, boom, boom. Now then, if you know the answer to that, then please telephone us or write to us. Uh, you can take part by writing into us at the usual address, or you can call us on our answer phone service, which is 0753 811. 817. Think about which charity you'd like to nominate, answer the question, and leave us your name and address and daytime telephone number, most importantly, and I'll call you back. We'll make all the necessary arrangements with, with William Hill, and also you will win the really, fa really fantastic, uh, really nasty horse racing game to give away. There it is, right in front of you. I think you've seen it, enough of it now. They're worth £30 each. It's a brilliant prize. It's fantastic to win it. Simply, can I remind you, answer this question. Who won the 1993 Grand National? Very simple. Thank you very much indeed to David Hood from uh, William Hill. Cool. And have a great time at Aintree. I hope you take lots and lots and lots of money. And I hope I have a little flutter and I win a few bob as well. Now then, I'll give you the address again at the end of the show. Good luck to you all. Now then, unless you've got a year's supply of shopping in, or you don't get out and about much, it cannot have escaped your notice that Easter is upon us. But what, we wondered, was uh, does Easter mean to you? We sent Russ Stevens and Tina Wynn onto the streets of Winder to find out from just about anybody. The crowd at WMTV have let us free for the day, and we're in Windsor to find out what the Windsorians think about Easter. So come on, let's go and find out and see what they've got to say. Right then, sir, what will you be doing this Easter? Going away most probably. And where are you going? Most probably going to New Forest. Mm -hmm. camping. Uh, family? No. Just no. camping? Yeah, just camping on my bike. Does Easter mean uh, a lot to you? Not particularly, just a holiday. Just a holiday, relax from work. Yeah. Um, Treat yourself to any uh, Easter eggs? 
Oh, yeah, do the general sort of thing, you know. Like, yeah. Totally pig out, really, do you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But basically, just solely, really. Mm -hmm. Would you say that Easter is uh, fairly commercialised? Yeah, it's got far too commercialised, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, Christmas is just over, and suddenly they've got Easter eggs out in the shop for really stupid. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, people are just making in money. Thanks for your views. Right. Have a nice Easter. Yeah, cheers. Can I just ask you what you're going to be doing over Easter? Well, Easter's for the family. Yeah. So will you be spending it with your family? Yes. Yeah. And will you be buying Easter eggs and hot cross buns? Well, I'll be buying Easter eggs for the children. And how about you? Going to work. Going to work? Going to work. To work at Penzance. Oh, right. Rugby to work. Oh, I see. Do you like Easter? Do you think it's become too commercialised these days? Uh, to be honest, the last three, four Easters, I've been away on tour with the rugby club. So I'm the normal All rugby teams go on tour at Easter time, see? And what about your poor wives? You just leave them at home? Yeah, we, do, we uh, look after somebody else's wives. <laughs> 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 oh, you buy the egg for the kids. And, so you, uh, obviously, yeah. you obviously enjoy Easter very much. <laughs> you get that. It's something that should be kept and should remain British. But do you think it's become too commercialised? Well. Do you think it's become too commercialised these days? Yeah, there's a lot of people who are making money at Easter you now, and uh, absolutely good thing. That's 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 right. Well, as long as you keep it going, it's the same as Christmas. Is it, has Christmas become too commercialised? We know what it's all about Easter anyway. We haven't gone off the wrong track like. So it's all about Easter. Good, so oh well, enjoy. Chris Easter. We're the God Squad. <laughs> Easter is a different date every year. And Christmas Day is always the 25th. But Easter is different. Yeah, but Easter is always there, and that's the main thing about it, isn't it? It's the same you celebrate it as Christian it's an or whatever. It's an that's a good holiday. Well, I hope you everyone. enjoy your tour, and thank you we very will. much. We will. Can I just ask you two, what do you have in those bags? Easter eggs for all my friends. For your friends? Yes. Do you like Easter time? Yes. What do you actually do at Easter? Sort of like uh, stay with my family and go out with like my boyfriend and that. Are you buying anything? Oh, it's one of these eggs for your boyfriend? Not yet, no. <laughs> Will you be sending him a card? Yes. And how about you? What do you do every Easter? I don't Easter? celebrate it. You don't celebrate no. it? Why not? It's not my religion. <laughs> so tell me, what will you be doing this Easter? Standing out here, touting for business. OK, so... Being the uh, carriage man, or one of the carriage men of Windsor, um, is it a very busy time in Easter? Uh, it can be fairly busy if the weather's reasonable. Right, and, and the tourists, are they mainly British or...? 70% of my customers live within 35 miles really? of Windsor. Really? Really? Yeah. Right, and Easter weekend, will it be more busy than, say, during the week? Okay. Yes. Right. Yes, okay. Definitely. Long days? Uh, can be. Right. Again, that depends on the weather. What do you actually think about the commercial side of Easter? Do you think it's too commercialised? I think the whole lot's too commercialised these days, <laughs> whether it be Easter, Christmas yeah. or birthdays. Right. Will you be sending anyone a special someone a nice Easter egg? I doubt it. Oh, well, never mind. Thanks very much. No problem. You're from France? Yes, from Paris. What's from Paris? Mm -hmm. How do you celebrate Easter in Paris? Uh, well, for the kinder, for the ch children, you know, you have um, Easter eggs hunt in the gardens, and you have a big family uh, lunch, you know, and you go to church. And do you send cards, Easter cards? Uh, I think in England you have a bigger selection of Easter cards, you know, we're not very big on cards in France. And you have a special meal at Easter time? Yes, yes, yes. And everybody gets together, you have a get-together? Yes, it's mainly a, a family celebration. Family celebration. Yes. Will you be sending a Chris, an Easter card to anybody or a oh, from Easter here, egg? From here, yes, yes. You will be. Probably, yes. Are you here for Easter time in Windsor? Yes. yes. You, have you visited the castle? No, we're just going to the castle. What now. do you think of Windsor? Do you like it? Oh, it's very pretty, especially when the sun is out. It's, uh, it's wonderful. Oh, well, I hope you have a nice Thank Easter. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, tell me, what does Easter mean to you? Chocolate. <laughs> Chocolate. 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 Yes. Is that cool? yes. Chocolate. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What about school holidays? Yeah, <laughs> we don't have one. Well, you have a week at least, don't you? Yeah. So, uh, you'll be going out with your friends and... Yeah. So, what will you be doing over Easter with your friends? <laughs> I'm going on holiday, so I think. Am I. Where are you going? Maybe Spain. Very nice. And that's for a week, is it? Yeah. Right, OK then. Right, well, thanks very much. Yeah. Hi, what are you going to be doing over Easter? Oh, well, I'm going to go to my country. That's in Sri Lanka. Oh, right. How long are you yeah. over here for? Uh, for three years to studies. Oh, I see. Do you celebrate Easter? Yeah, of course, yeah. What will you be doing? Well, back home, yeah. Make Easter eggs and almost what you all do here. 
Do they have hot cross buns in Sri Lanka? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do they have instead? Well, I mean... What will you be eating with well, Easter treats? Uh, well, it differs, yeah, because it's, it's a different culture altogether, but uh, we do celebrate Easter. But do you think it's more commercialised in this country? Yeah, that is it true. Is. Yeah, it is, yes. Do you wish it was more commercialised in your country? No, I don't think. No, I, that's, you don't like we it? Have, we made it suits, suits us, yeah? So I don't think... Uh, OK, Darren Birch, what will you be doing this Easter? Well, this Easter we're going on a stag do. So <laughs> we'll be in Bournemouth, <laughs> um, buying plenty of Easter eggs and um, other things, and uh, doing <laughs> silly things like yeah. boys do on stag do's. Who's stag do? Matthew Thurston. Oh, is, it, so is he here? If you're watching this, Matthew, we're going to tie you to the lamppost, we're going to rip all your clothes off, cover you in shaving cream, and we're just going to shave your eyebrows off, and we're going to do a lot more, a lot more. <laughs> and this Which... is the man that's going to be tying you to the lamppost. Graham Brown. Graham Brown. Graham Brown. Graham. 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 <laughs> Graham. Graham Brown. Right, Graham Brown. Graham Brown. Brown. I presume you'll be there too. Yeah, I'll be there. So uh, there's 16 of us. OK. So. It's... And you'll be eating loads of Easter eggs. Yeah, over true. Easter. All bought um, from Woolworths. Right. That is the place the to be. Street. Yeah, it's the place to be. No, I like Easter because it's, it's, it's totally religious. I mean, I like watching Jesus Christ Superstar. Right. Hi, what do you think about Easter time? It's like a time to say sorry for everything we've done wrong. To say sorry? Have yeah. you done lots of things wrong then? Well, not too much. Do you go to church at Easter time? Yes, well, I okay. go to church every Sunday. You go to church every Sunday? Oh, yes. And uh, have you got some time off as it's Easter? Yes, I break up from school next Thursday. How long do you have off? Two weeks. Two weeks off? Wow, yes. what are you going to be doing in that two weeks? We might be going away. Where might you be going? Um, we might, we're might. we thinking about going to France. Oh, lovely. And so will you be taking your Easter eggs with you and opening them up yes. on Easter Day? Yes. Do you always have Easter eggs every year? Yes. And do you have hot cross buns? Yes. Yeah. How about you? Do you have hot cross buns? Yes. And Easter eggs? Yeah. What are your favourites? The chocolate or the milk chocolate? Or the white Cho chocolate? Normal chocolate. Just normal chocolate. And yeah. um, so what are you going to be doing at Easter time? Um, just staying at my house and my family. Staying at home, relaxing with your friends. OK, then, well, thank you very much. Bye-bye. So, uh, what do you think about what? Easter. We used to love Easter. Do you? It's a very yes. important time of the year for you. Most important, yes. Lovely spring festival. Absolutely. Yes. Thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, do I don't know why anybody shouldn't. <laughs> Do you attend church? Yes. Easter Sunday, very yes, important day. Yes, I do. So very religious. Oh, I think it's a wonderful time. Right. People miss an awful lot. At least not appreciating flowers and things like right. Easter. So what do you think about the uh, commercial side of Easter? Well, it isn't as bad as Christmas. Right. I think Easter is a nicer time for that reason, really, because it doesn't start so early. <laughs> Because Christmas starts in about September or October, and um, Easter's very much better. Do, 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 do. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Do, 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 do. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Do, 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 do. I hate to leave you, but really must say, good night, sweetheart. Good night. Do, 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 do. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Do, 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 do. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must say Good night, sweetheart, good night Good night, well, well it's great for me And baby, I just can't get wrong Well, I hate to leave you, baby I don't mean me Because I love you so Good night, sweetheart, well, it's time to go Good night, sweetheart, well, it's time to go I hate to leave you, but I really must say Good night, sweetheart, good night Good night, well, and your father Might not like you, but they hate to leave you Well, I hate to leave you, baby I don't mean maybe You know I love you so
Right, tell me, what does Easter mean to you? It just means a break to me, quite honestly. Thanks. If I said Easter, what does it mean to you? Um, Easter eggs and going to church on Easter Sunday. Is that what you're going to be doing? Yes. Thank I you. Am. How about you? What are you going to be doing over Easter? Um, I'm staying up here, going up to my boyfriend's, going to church. Buying Easter eggs? Hopefully not. No. <laughs> no. How about you? Are you going to be eating hot cross buns? I'd imagine so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And sending out any cards to anyone? Yeah, my nieces and nephews, I think. Right. Would you like to say hello to anyone out there and wish anyone a happy Easter? Um, well, just all my family, all my friends, and everybody believes in God. <laughs> so tell me, young lady, what does Easter mean to you? Happy time? Mm hmm New, I don't know. Spring. Spring. What about the children? They like it too, having Easter eggs. <laughs> you find it rather expensive, Easter? That's really, no. Yeah. Basically, you should buy the, the children Easter eggs and uh, relax? Yes. Yeah. Do, you, do you go to church? Or? No. 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 OK, well, that's what the Windsorians think of Easter. But what I'm dying to know is what's Russell going to be doing this Easter? Let's go and find out. Russell. What? Oh. <laughs> Russell, what are you going to be doing this Easter? Working and not chatting her up for a start. How about eating Easter eggs and hot cross buns? Absolutely. Got to. But, um, Part of my diet. Do you have any room in there to fit any more <laughs> Easter eggs bit, in? A little bit, a dear. And what will you be doing for Easter? Me? Well, I've just bought a flat, so I'm going to be doing loads of painting and loads of decorating. How about a painting party? Yes, I'm having a painting party. So if you bring your Easter eggs along and your hot cross buns, you're welcome to come along. Right, from Windsor and from us, it's back to the man with the wincy at nighty and the Velcro underpants. Bye. Bye. I was waiting for the kiss at the end. Um, thank you, Russ and Tina. And if you want Tina's address for the painting party, I'll be giving it to you at the programme. Now then, I want to know what Russ said to get the slap in the face. Never mind. Still on the subject of Easter, there's a wonderful offer at the Windsor Arts Centre on the 5th, 6th and 7th of April. For just £15, you can take part in dance, drama, music and arts. The days last from 10.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. And there's a special performance at 4 o'clock on the last afternoon for friends and relatives. It's absolutely free. £15 for three days can't be bad. It's aimed at 7 to 11 and 12 to 14 year olds respectively. To get in touch with the lady who's organising it, her name is Joy, call her at Feet First. That's 081 440 5545. Still to come on Scene on 7, the new video from Hope and your chance to find out more about two brand new channels available from the Cable Corporation. Join me after the break. Back soon. Look, I know you're supposed to be hard, but let me try and explain. Giving blood is a very good thing to do. How can you be so, so cold about it? Don't you understand, without blood donors, there'd be no operations? or treatment for blood diseases, or for burns, or for newborn babies. People with haemophilia would bleed to death. Am I getting through to you? I don't know, they were right. It's like trying to get blood out of a... Oh, thank you. Welcome back, you're watching WMTV. Now then, ever hopeful to please everybody and offer the ultimate in variety in television, two new channels are available from this week. Maria Davis is here to reveal all in just a moment. But first of all, here's what you can expect from the Family Channel. Coming up. To travel, Europe's brand new channel bringing you the world. with the best and brightest travel programmes. As it happens, when it happens, and how it affects you. I'm Cathy Taylor. I hope you'll all tune in tomorrow and every day on your newest cable channel, Travel, on Channel 32, to join me on Travel News. Wherever you go, and whatever your needs, 
Travel will bring you an up-to-the-minute global weather service. There's entertainment in faraway places. Hello, I'm Tessa Sanderson. Hello, I'm Adrian Morehouse. Hi, I'm Marie Helvin. I've just been to Paradise, and you can go there too. Join me on Travel Snaps. As well as celebrity reports. Action. Adventure. Mystery and romance, plus the ultimate travel guide. So join me, Samantha Norman, and me, Martin Roberts, on Travel Fire. And Travel Text, our exclusive information service and programme guide. Welcome to the latest and brightest channel. Welcome to Travel. April Fool, I meant the Travel Channel. OK, all right, I'm sorry, it was my mistake, not theirs. Uh, now then, to uh, tell me more about uh, the two new channels that are being offered to you, absolutely free, I might add, is Maria Davis, who's the Marketing Manager for the Cable Corporation. Hi, Maria. Hi, Steve. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Um, we're launching two new channels, uh, the yep. Travel Channel and the Family Channel. How will they benefit the viewers? Well, we're always striving, as you know, Steve, to provide extra choice and extra value for our customers. Um, these two channels have, have been done after a certain amount of market research. Um, and they'll be included in the package from this week. So it's more choice, more value, no extra cost, as you say. With particular reference to what we've just seen for the Travel Channel, um, that's exclusive to cable. It is, yes. Travel's on a, on a low-powered satellite, so people who've got sky dishes can't actually receive it at all. Serve them right. So it's another reason for, say, to, for staying as a, a customer of the Cable Corporation. Uh, we've had a, uh, a brief glimpse uh, uh, of what the Travel Channel has to offer, but the service is much, much more comprehensive than what we've seen on there. For example? Yes. Um, I mean, travel programming is very, very popular, as, yeah. as you know, and things like Wish You Were Here and Holiday re achieve fantastic viewing figures here in the UK. Um, and that's where the idea of travel TV came from, really. Mm. Um, but it's not just travelogue programming. Um, you'll get the opportunity to follow Cathy Taylor as she goes sort of looking at news and views to do with travel. They cover the weather for all of Europe and the main resorts worldwide. You'll find programming that specifically looks at perhaps cooking or sports from different countries around yeah. the world. So it's travel and associated activities, really. And, of course, the fact that it's in, a, in, a, in the format of being a channel rather than a half-hour program, mm -hmm. it's much, much more comprehensive. Absolutely. And there's also a tech service. There is, yes. The tech service that backs up the channel has got all of the information about the countries and holidays that are featured in the programming. So it's a useful source of, of reference. And even bigger and even better than Wish You Were Here in the Holiday Program, <laughs> um, as an added incentive, as mm. if it's not already watchable enough, um, there are some fabulous competitions. There are. There are all sorts of big competitions every single week on the Travel Channel. I mean, thousands of pounds worth, and you can win holidays all over the world. I take uh, it we can't enter, can we? Well, you never know. As, as part of the launch process, um, the Cable Corporation is, is running competitions with some of the local media. So we're running a competition on Star FM and with the Slough Observer and the Maidenhead Advertiser. To win um, thousands of pounds worth of holidays. To, to get win a tan one before holiday in each of those. So um, our viewers should, should look out for those. In addition to that, um, there's the simultaneous launch of the Family Channel. Yeah. Now, the content of that is, is quite broad, isn't it? It is. I mean, their, their aim is to provide general, all-round, good fun family entertainment. So as well as dramas and, and movies, you'll find quiz shows. Um, they're making a version of, of Catchphrase, which is a very popular quiz show on ITV, but this is for whole families at a right. time, so that's a, a variation on a theme. And also, uh, the, the very popular Tony Slattery is doing a version of Trivial Pursuit. Which Hopefully is that's a family very version as well. Yes. We, we hope, we hope, we hope. <laughs> um, also, there, there is um, specifically made documentaries that's right. from a family point of view, made by National Geographic. Yep. Um, and he looks at his notes to find out some more. Um, there's specially made family movies. That's right. You, you'll, you'll find that there's a mixed variety of programming, both from the States, from Australia, uh, and also programming that's been made here in the UK. Um, and we're seeing some reruns of popular old uh, programming as well. We've got Remington Steel coming up and also Cat's Eyes with Jill Gascoigne. Lovely lady. Very nice lady. Now, the other thing about uh, the Family Channel is that because these programs are specifically made for that channel, the parents could leave the room, leave the house if necessary, and feel perfectly happy that they've been edited, especially for family viewing, so the children can watch everything that's well, on that's there. Well, that's right, yes. Uh, basically, you can really leave your kid, kids in the, the secure knowledge that they're not going to see any violence um, or bad language. So, you know, it, it's all good family viewing. Hmm. Right, now, 
Finally, Maria, how would you sum up the two channels? I mean, we're offering two new channels. It's a, it's a very comprehensive service, as I think you've explained in some detail. How would you sum them up? That's right. I mean, that, I just hope that the customers will enjoy them. There are some more details in our uh, Cable Choice magazine, which customers right. should have had over the past week or so. Um, are they in the Cable Guide? You'll find, um, I think, Travel in the Cable Guide and Family in the Cable Guide from next month. Right. Um, as they, as they come on scene. That's right. There are programming details in the program guide that's on screen. Right. Um, and we'd like to hear customers' reactions to them, really. Um, so if they can write in or call into customer care, we'd be happy to hear their views. Right. And the customer care number is 0753 810 707. That's 0753. There's the number right there. 810 707. That's customer care. And they'll be happy to talk to you about any aspect of the cable corporation, but particularly what you feel about the family channel and also the travel channel. Thank you very much, Maria. Thanks, Here's Steve. what you can expect from the family channel. Now there's TV entertainment that everyone can enjoy. The family channel. Drama, comedy, adventure, and familiar faces all in one great package. The family channel broadcasts from an 11 acre studio complex in Maidstone, Kent soon to have its own dedicated satellite uplink. Programs include drama series made exclusively for the channel, or as co-productions, such as the swashbuckling action adventure, Zorro. I want that reward, my son. The early days of Spanish Los Angeles are recreated on location in Spain, while from the other side of the world, the award-winning Australian medical series, GP. Dr. Michael Terry is a tough psychologist who takes problem kids from the crime of inner cities to discover a new life on his ranch in Neon Rider. You told them? Why did you do that? Because they're your parents. They care. Snowy River, the McGregor Saga, is a prestigious Family Channel production set in Australia's pioneering days, exploring the tensions and greed of a new land. And very soon, I will own Luke McGregor. Family Channel Comedy and Big Brother Jake plays foster father to a group of wild kids. How'd school go today, Kateri? I am so good, it's scary. We really have to work on this confidence problem of yours, Kateri. And Bert Reynolds has oddball neighbors in evening shade. Who do I remind you? A middle-aged mutant ninja math teacher. <laughs> Stuart Hall's unforgettable laugh returns as he oh, chortled oh. through an all-new series of TV's funniest game show, Je <laughs> Sans Frontières. <laughs> the nightly quiz shows continue their success with Andrew O'Connor hot-footing his way through a new series of family catchphrase recorded at the Maidstone Studios. Stuart! Answering machine. It is. Tony Slattery gets to grips with some tongue-twisting trivia in Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> and contestants are laughing too if they win cash in the nightly interactive quiz. Welcome back. This is gameplay. Tell me, in which year did Concorde make its first supersonic flight? 76. That's the correct answer. <laughs> Entertainment Now features exclusive news from the world of showbiz as well as the latest haute couture from top fashion houses around the world. A focus on international performing arts, plus theatre and film news. National Geographic Explorer is seen only on the Family Channel and gives a fascinating insight into the treasures of our planet. A new perspective on the creatures who live side by side with us. If he sees an insect up on a rock, he'll shoot a stream of water at it and knock it into the water, and then he feeds on it. A new energy, a new feel, something that people can enjoy together. The Family Channel.
Looks great to me, I must say. I think yes. it's really worth it. Now, one thing we forgot to mention, the reason we sort of kept you here for another mm. couple of minutes, is that um, it's a knockout as part of this. And I know, it's great fabulous, to see it again. Isn't it? Yes. Wouldn't well, you just love to have a go? What happened was when it was sort of canned here in the UK, the Europeans were also enthusiastic about it. They've kept it going. Just en front hier. Absolutely. And Mr. Stuart Hall's gone out and done all of the, the commentary on them, so they'll be brilliant. brilliant fun. So, as well as watching Just en front hier or, or It's a Knockout, you get Stuart's laughter all the way through the yes, programme. Which is it's it's even funnier than the game sometimes. What a job. Pay to laugh. Thanks again, Maria, for sparing the time Thank to uh, come over and see us. So there you go, more choice and great value uh, for cable TV. Don't forget that number. If you'd like to talk to customer care, it's on the screen right there. 0753 810 707. 0753 810 707. And thanks again to Maria. Crime now, and twice last week, St Mary's Church in my own village of Harmonsworth was the target. A specially commissioned stained glass window in memory of a former parishioner was smashed to gain access, uh, access, access to the picturesque church. Nothing was stolen, and a few days earlier someone broke in through the church hall, and once again nothing was taken, completely senseless. The Reverend Harry Bolton uh, said a few would disagree with what he said. Also, you just wonder what drives these people to do such things. I would like to ask them why they do it. It begs the obvious question, is nothing sacred? Time to meet the people who have to track down these idiots and deal with them. Yes, Inspector Bob Owen and Sergeant Nick Wood from Ashford Police Station are back with Police File. My name's Bob Owen, and this week we're live from the Ashford Police Office. Nick Wood's got a couple of items this week, but let's keep him in the cold while you get your pens and paper out. We have a number of crimes that we need your help with. First, a burglar who stole a number of valuable and sentimental items from Chesterfield Road in Ashford. It was about 3.30pm on Friday the 18th when a white man, about 40 years old, with brown hair, long at the back, wearing a blue jacket and jeans, deceived the occupier, then burst his way in. He took a lot of personal jewellery, and he was also described as having scars on both sides of his face. Did you see him or his partner in crime? If so, ring us now on 0784 421 409. The next item is a very nasty attack that happened during a mass punch-up at the Dog and, pa Dog and Partridge pub in Staines on the evening of the same day, Friday the 18th of March. About 10.30pm a fight broke out between two gangs and two members of the public were taken to Ashford Hospital with some nasty cuts from beer glasses. Were you at the pub? Did you see this fight? Who started it? Ring us now on 0784 421 409 with fine with details. Do you know somebody who's a fence in sports gear? Who's been knocking out baseball bats, squash rackets, Man United and England football shirts, and Puma footballs? Well, the chances are he got them from a smash and grabber who struck at Sunbury Sports Centre at Sunbury Cross, which is at the start of the M3, just before midnight on Wednesday, the 16th of March. Have you been offered this gear? Do you know somebody who's got it? Ring us now on 0784 421 409. And now over to Nick, who's going to tell us about Mousetrap, but without the cheese. Nick. Thanks, Bob. I'm out in Church Road, Ashford. In this road alone, during 1993, nearly 60 pedal cycles were stolen. Regular viewers will be aware of this continuous problem, which we've mentioned many times before. Hard on the heels of our rat trap initiative to catch the car thieves comes the Mousetrap. To catch the local bike thieves, we've started putting decoy bikes out in high crime areas such as this. Plain clothes officers watch the bike from nearby, and when the thieves strike, so do we. Mousetrap has only been operating for a few hours, but already it has resulted in two arrests. Fueled by the success, we intend to extend this operation throughout Ashford and Stanwell. 
Some people have said this is unfair to the thieves, but we say that anything is fair if it keeps our streets crime free. Stealing, from, stealing bikes from Ashford and Stanwell is now even more risky for the thieves. Now let's have a look at our extra security patrols in the wake of the Heathrow mortar attacks. I'm at St Anne's School in Clare Road, Stanwell. Since the recent attacks, many local people have been asking us at Ashford what is being done to prevent further incidents. Here is part of the answer. In addition to extra foot patrols, we've been operating in Colnbrook, Poyle, Stanwell Moor and Stanwell. We've asked the Mounted Branch to work in this area for a while. Each day they come to a different school near to the airport and patrol the large open spaces which cannot be covered easily on foot. Crispin Harding Rolls, you're one of the mounted officers on these patrols. Welcome to Spellthorne. Can you tell us a little bit more about your horse? This horse, he's called Timothy. He is a, a gelding. He's quite young, he's only five years old. And he is currently in his training before he comes a full-time, properly trained police horse. And whereabouts uh, is he normally stabled? Currently, he's based at a stables in Richmond Park called Thatcher's Lodge with five other horses. Um, what sort of events do you normally get involved in? Well, once he comes fully trained, he'll, his main function will be public order, which consists of football matches, marches and high-profile policing getting involved with local patrols, taskings, um, and reassuring the public whenever we are patrolling. And so what does his normally, normal daily routine consist of at the moment? Normally he's given his um, fee, he's fed three times a day, once at seven o'clock, once at one o'clock, and an evening feed, which is between five and six o'clock. We normally patrol between four and five hours a day. It's not constant patrol, it's just um, we can stop off and we get off their backs and give them a rest. Um, there's lots of grooming involved and the general stable work. Thanks Crispin. I'll leave you now to get on with the patrols. Each horse will be patrolling for about four hours each day be before returning to the stables. As a result, our open spaces will be much safer for us all. Now back over to Bob in, in his nice warm office. Thanks Nick. And next, our regular stolen car slot. Pens poised? First, a white Austin Maxi LLX 361V. A blue Yamaha, which is a moped 50cc D260 JGL. And a blue Vauxhall Astra E418 GLB. These cars and mopeds could be in your area. Have you seen them? If so, ring us with the details on 0784 421-409. Can you help us catch a robber? Were you near the Abbey National Cash Point in Staines about 7pm on the first Thursday in March? A number of people saw two criminals in the area. One had a knife and he had a red sweat top, red sweat top and jeans. Due to the brave actions of the members of the public and the lady who was robbed, the shoulder bag was recovered. Who is this robber? Did you see anything that could help us close the net on him? If so, ring us now on 0784 421 409. Detective McIntyre needs your help. Between Monday the 21st of March and Thursday the 31st, the Metropolitan Police will be running a seatbelt campaign. This is in support of the Department of Transport Initiative to reduce and prevent traffic accident injuries. What this means is that if your car is fitted with a seatbelt, you and the children in the car must wear them. If you get caught, you could get a 50 or a 100 pound fine. As Jimmy Savile used to say, clunk crick every trip. And now for all you budding snooker players. The Ritz annual junior snooker tournament takes place in Staines starting the 4th of April for four days. You must be over 14 but under 17 and a resident of Spellthorne. And the matches will be run like a league table. You can get your entry forms from Ashford, Ashford, Sunbury or Staines Police Station 
or ring Janet Dory on 0784 446788. And good luck to Pop Black. That's all for this bit on Scene on 7. From a very cold Nick and myself, goodbye for now. Poor old Nicky always gets to stand out in the cold. Um, but there again, Bob is the inspector, I suppose. Thank you. WMTV is keen to report on technical innovations and at the forefront of the fight against motorway madness, in this case, speeding. If you use the roads around the region, beware, because you could be one of the first to be caught by the seemingly innocuous cone. Over the past 18 months or so, we've been getting used to seeing roadside speed cameras telling us how fast we're travelling. Yet there's growing evidence we're getting too used to them, taking them too much for granted, particularly when it comes to obeying speed restrictions through roadworks. Police are becoming so concerned that they're testing a revolutionary new device. Revolutionary it may be, but surprising it certainly is. This new speed camera comes disguised as an ordinary traffic cone. Motorists are set to face the dawning of a new age when too much accelerator will have the cones flashing back. Inspector Steve Thwaites is in charge of this experiment for Thames Valley Police. Steve, what benefits is this device going to give you? Um, the biggest that we've no, sort of seen at the moment is the, um, the fact that it's so portable. We can move it from location to location as opposed to the conventional uh, speed devices we've seen in the past, which are obviously rigidly fixed at particular sites. Doesn't that mean, though, if it's portable, it's easily stolen? That's obviously a concern we've got, um, and also the vulnerability of perhaps being hit by a vehicle. Um, and that's something that the manufacturers are looking at, some form of tamper-proof device for us. Now, isn't this experiment tying up officers who would otherwise be dealing with burglaries and other crimes like that? Obviously, um, speed enforcement is a real issue because of the number of lives that are lost, but at the same time, it's got to be balanced against the needs of those that are being burgled. Um, the beauty of this is it doesn't work on a film, again, like the conventional uh, cameras do, and therefore we're not tying officers up with that. It's much quicker and easier to operate so, in fact, we can do the same amount of enforcement, if not more, and spare more resources um, for matters that are affecting people in their day-to-day -day lives. How much is this costing the council towns of the Thames Valley area? The beauty is it's cost them absolutely nothing because it is a new system. Um, the manufacturers are paying for all costs, um, not only the equipment, but all enforcement costs and prosecution costs. So, in fact, whereas in the past the traditional devices have cost them a lot of money, um, this is actually costing them absolutely nothing and obviously we're going to make the most of it. Carriageway Observation and Notification Equipment, or CONE for short, makes use of components at the leading edge of technology. Klaus Upschnapper, you're the inventor of this new device. How does it work? It generates an electric field at a frequency which can be preset like a torch. A speeding car triggers the flash uh, instead of a photo on a film, it takes an analysis image stored in this black box. So what advantages does it have? It gives a much clearer detail of the number plate on a car. No need to change film because there isn't one. Police can interrogate it by driving past in a car fitted with special transponder. That's a very simple uh, device. Where did you get the idea from? I've worked on radar systems for the past 25 years. I thought of the device when I was working on an underwater project to guard harbors and projects near sea oil rigs. So why do you think that basically this is the device for the job? Because it's portable, can be used in all weathers and like all good inventions, it's simple. Scientists are excited at this invention. The police are keen to see it in routine service. But what do the motorists think? I don't think it's quite fair to the motorists. You, uh, you don't really know if it's working, it's not working. Um, and besides, the old police car was a bit of fun, I thought. <laughs> I think it's a good idea to have speed traps around. Yeah. I, think, I think some motorists drive far too quick. Isn't it the sort of thing, though, you think you might get used to? Probably not. No, I think if you know that they're there, I think you will keep your speed down. Yes, I would, anyway. I'd be wary. I'd have to be very careful myself, um, <laughs> for obvious reasons. But uh, um, if it works, it's a good idea. And nowadays, but, uh, of course, people are getting used to speed cameras. So uh, do you think that's going to help them? Um, no, I think the, being in cones will catch people out. Uh, um, you know, sort of, 
where they originally put the, camera, the cameras, you can see. I mean, you see people slowing down. People forgot to know where they were. Um, uh, so I suppose surprise is the trick. The sweet camera. That means you're going to catch me too, is it? <laughs> that means you're going to catch me too. So I'll involve it as well. Well, I think that it would be a good system, you know, because you have these uh, young lads, you know, speeding away like they're mad. And they don't know what they're doing. Because vehicle is something that you don't have control on. You, when you think you have control, all of a sudden, you're out of control. And there's where accident comes in, you see? Because you can control vehicle. You might think you can control vehicle, but you can't control vehicle, you see? So I think that would be a good idea. In traffic cones? I had no idea they were doing it. I'm taken aback, to be honest. I think it's pitiful and abysmal, to be honest. Um, are they not even um, announced that they're doing it? It's an experiment at the moment. Right, OK, but there's nothing on the roadside to say they're doing it? No, well, there are roadside speed camera signs at the moment. I mean, if, if they come in uh, all over the place, what, what would you feel as a motorist, though? Well, I'm disappointed about the number of cones around anyway at the moment. So if they're just putting cones up for the sake of attracting speeding motorists, I think that's wrong. Uh, they, they do have other methods at their disposal for catching motorists that are speeding. You've kicked them, you've cursed them, you've put them on top of phone boxes to try and get them out of the way. But just remember one thing. The cone always wins. Thank you, Tom. It never ceases to amaze me how upset people get when we interview them in the street. It's especially strange when it's such an important step forward in protecting road users. Now then, without doubt, take that, are the biggest British music acts since the Beatles, but the famous five are being given a fair run for their money by a Birmingham duo. They're hot, especially since their appearance at the smash hits poll winners party at Wembley. Richard Davidson and Andy Rouse are the next big thing. They'll be joining me in the studio in the next couple of weeks. For now, you'll have to be content with their new single. Here's Heaven in My Hands. They're called Hope.
brilliant. I think it's great. We all love it. Hope and their brand new single, Heaven in My Hands, is out now. It's on Warner Brothers Records. And uh, so go out and buy it, make it a big hit. Now then, there we are. The Easter edition of Seen on Seven is almost over and not an Easter egg in sight. Or was there? Anyway, forget, uh, do not forget that we have uh, three really nasty horse racing games to give away. Two uh, separate prizes, and all you've got to do to win one of those is tell me which horse won the 1993 Grand National. Send your answers to the usual address, which is seen on 7, WMTV, PO Box 7, Slough SL3 6ET. And the £25 charity bet, plus a really nasty horse racing game, can also be yours if you answer the other question, which is, uh, I've forgotten, no I haven't, it's uh, the Grand National is run in Aintree, in which city is Aintree Racecourse? Very, very easy. On that one, phone the competition line, which is 0753 811 817. That's 0753 811 817. Please inclu include in your message your name, address, and daytime telephone number. And the uh, question, just to refresh your memory once again, for the first competition is, who, which horse, sorry, won the 1993 Grand National? More competitions, information, and news from the region next week. Keep up to date with the 24-hour moving magazine service. Join me then. Have a great week till then, and a very happy Easter. Bye-bye.